Hey guys, back here again with the Prelude bottom end of the engine build. Uh, today I'm going to clean up the crankshaft here next to me and then I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm pretty sure these bearing clearances are going to be fine but I'm going to go ahead and try and use some plastic gauge to just kind of verify that you know nothing's undersized or needs a larger bearing to go in it. But I'll bring you along with that. So I'm going to go ahead and start cleaning this crank up, um, cleaning out the block a little bit more, and then I'll bring you along for the plastic gauge stuff. Alright guys, so now I'm at the point where I want to go ahead and plastic gauge this bottom end. So it comes in a little pack, it looks like this, and this little green strip coming out of it is all that it is. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure the length, it doesn't have to even be the whole width. So I'm just going to cut out a small little section here. Well, we're not using that one. Small little section here. And then you want to lay it on the bearing surface where you want to measure. So that piece is going right there on the very top. And then I'm just going to repeat that process throughout. So you just want to set it on there. You want to have your bearings in. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these. Uh, get this torque down. And then I'm going to take it apart and show you what you're looking for. All right, guys. I got the plastic gauge in there. I had everything torqued down, took it back apart. Taking off main caps can be a real pain in the butt, so. But anyhow, uh, here, I'll kind of run you through what my results are. So, actually, let me grab the little plastic gauge kit right here. So, on either side of this, it gives you, on this side, I believe, is in, yeah, inches. So it goes from, uh, what, three thousandths of an inch to one thousandth of an inch. Then on the, re on the reverse side, it gives you from 0.025 to 0.076. Now, I already looked at this, and seems like the size and color matches up best to 0.051. Really, we wanted to be in this 0.038 territory. If anything, I'd say it's on the bigger side of the 0.051. But that puts it right at, if not just beyond uh, Honda's spec. But then again, what I've also heard is that uh, sometimes these bearing clearances, they'll actually run a slight bit um, larger for more power in general. 
Sorry, can't get a good image on that one. But the main thing is, if you look at them, is they all seem... This one's a little, this one's a little bit different. The, uh, the center, the number three journal, actually has a, a little bit of a larger bearing clearance for oil. But the other four are all relatively uniform. So... I'm going to call it a success. Uh, these are the King XP main bearings, and I have the same for the rod bearings. Um, they may, like I said, actually be clearance a slight bit larger for, um, you know, getting more oil in there and stuff. As much, as much as, to me, it seems kind of counteractive, but anyhow. So I'm going to call that good, and um, I'm going to assemble the, uh, I'm going to clean off What's left of that, I'm going to do the rod bearings, and then we're going to go into final bottom end assembly. So, I'll be back with you here soon. Alright guys, so I have the piston rings installed here. Um, I'm just going to run you through um, the process. I mean, not the process, but I'm going to show you what I did here. If you go on to your... Um, the manufacturer of your piston or ring company or whatever, they'll give you this. Basically, it's showing that, well, actually, I'll explain this in person. But basically, um, you want to pick a side on these. I believe I started here. I don't know how we, how well this is going to come out. can't really focus that well. Um, but yeah, right there, right above my thumbnail, you can see uh, they call this the oil ring expander. But the, it is butted up right there, the two ends. And you want to make sure that they are butted like that and not potentially overlapped on each other. If they are, your uh, oil retention rings are not going to want to um, do their jobs properly. So I'm, I was going off of what they put here. So if you look at the dome of the piston, it would be at what they call the six o'clock position. Basically, whenever you're uh, degreeing rings, you want to look from this direction but yeah so that's there according to this they want the oil rail rings both at uh what would you call that like the 230 and like 930 position or 2 and 10 something around that nature so from the top here not sure how well i'm going to be able to get focus I know I did this right. Oh, it's really hard to see here on camera. That's the problem. Yeah, you'll see the bottom ring is angled there. And what would be like the 10 position. And over here on the 2. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. But what would be on the bottom, currently in frame, is actually the top of the oil rings. And it is at the 2 position. And then my second ring is clocked at the nine and top ring is clocked basically at one o'clock. I'll double check these as they go in but about to start installing uh, pistons in the block and it's time for final assembly. All right so I have the other three uh, pistons and rods and everything installed. Um, basically everything came off a of fresh clean up and everything but uh, for this third what's my last cylinder here you want to make sure that your cylinder itself is well lubricated you do not want to be putting in piston rings totally dry especially not whenever this is the last time you get to go in here really before startup unless uh, you come across some sort of other complications so that's all nice and lubed up. Now my pistons with the rings and everything on. I'm going to lube up the skirts here a little bit. Just try to get oil anywhere that can be kind of compromising. And make sure my rings are still lined up. And this set is not. Not anymore. And that is pretty good. And then as as far as uh, installing piston rings, I like to use these. They are, uh, this one specifically, the Weiss Co. for 
82 mil millimeters uh, or they give the inch measurement as well but I imagine uh, if you're going for specifically 82 millimeters I don't think there's very many uh, inch ones that straight up will fit the same but instead of having to do the whole compression tool method what I like to do with these is you just go ahead and preload it here sometimes you gotta play with the rings a hair just to get them going in and we're in there and I get it where we're basically about ready to poke out the bottom so the skirts are hanging out. Most of the piston is actually hanging out, but the rings are not. And then get it installed here. Try to angle it so we don't have to play with the rod much to line up with the crank when we go in. Seems pretty good to me. And then just tap it in. If you can get it in by hand too, that's great. And that's it. You don't have to fumble around with that other tool, obviously, if you're messing with a lot of different stuff. But this is the only engine I'm going to really be getting this in depth with anytime soon. And there's a potential that it could happen a lot. But now I'm going to make sure that I don't mark the crank as I get to the bottom here. Installed. Everything still looks clean on the race. Get those pushed together. Alright, and then, then with these Eagle rods that came with ARP 2000 rod bolts, and they come with ARP specific Molly lube, or no, this is fastener assembly, ARP Ultra Torque is what they call it. But I specify if you do not use this, specific lubricant on the threads and a little bit on the bottom of the bolt head. Now you will in fact need a different torque spec than what they specify. And what I understand is I actually would like you to check for bolt stretch after install. But I do not have the tooling for that. I'm going to trust the uh, torque wrench on this and go to exactly what they say and use the exact lube and should be what we need Right now I already have my torque wrench set here, another three, we're going to go to 28 foot-pounds. I got them finger tight, and I'm going a little bit more until I start to feel a hair of resistance. Well, didn't get there yet, this one was already really loose, finger loose again, so... There, just start to feel, feel a little bit of resistance going back. Just stay even, trying to evenly disperse as you go with your torque. These are about the same, and that's where they should be. All right. 
used the rods and pistons assembled, and now to put in uh, the main girdle. Hey guys, so I know this is a pretty drastic break from where I left you off last. If I remember right, it was um, as far as like doing piston rings and actually installing the uh, rods and pistons. But I don't know, I was getting a little stressed with the recording and just trying to be like so perfect about making sure I got all the details. But also, it's not, this isn't something I do every day. So I was like second guessing myself and losing focus over having to try to record. But anyway, back here now and I'll kind of show you where we're at. So, engine is fully assembled. I got the head studs torqued down, camshafts installed, and then um, as far as camshafts go, it's B20 A5 engine, but the exhaust is a B21, which I robbed out of the old engine, and then this is actually, I believe, a B18A intake camshaft. I got it. I looked at the receipt on the box. I actually bought this off a member of Prelude Power. Uh, I believe 11 years ago at this point in time, so yeah, about time to get this thing going. But anyway, so yeah, camshafts are installed. If this isn't a B18A, uh, Steve on, uh, well, he was Moto XXX Man on uh, Prelude Power, went through degreeing these, and he said if it's B18A, that it would actually be, um, I believe technically he said it would be retarded five degrees, so you'd have to actually advance it two and a half. I did some base adjustment on it, but I'm going to actually uh, see what we can come up more with uh, my tuner whenever this thing goes on the dyno. But anyhow, it's uh, ready to go in. I got cams on, head on, timing is all done. I actually went ahead and adjusted the valves out of car. That was pretty nice to do while it's still on the stand. All the little brackets and stuff have been freshly uh, powder co coated. Um, I did powder coat my alternator bracket and just uh, as a heads up, something that I've seen issues on other cars, actually in particular 2001 to 2005 Civics, is like if this bolt isn't fully tied on your alternator, that your alternator actually kind of partially grounds out to the engine. So I made sure I flipped this bracket over and ground the back side to bare metal. So it has some metal to metal contact with the rest of the engine. And this little uh, bushing in here is still metal to metal, even though it's been powder coated. It slid through and it's got actual metal touching. So should all, should all be good there. I modified my, uh, what was the AC bracket, but now it's just here for uh, alternator tension and tensioner for the power steering pulley. But I chopped off the bottom portion to get more clearance for the oil drain. And yeah, the WeirdTech turbo manifold. Um, yeah, freshly assembled transmission. Ended up having to paint it. It just was not going to look very good in the form it was. And then to kind of go over what's going on up here. Um, it is a B28-5 lower intake manifold. This is a, an adapter that, um, gosh, I can't even remember his name right now. Um, one of the guys, if you go ask around on the Facebook pages, um, there's a guy from over in uh, the European area who m makes these adapters to adapt to a H22 upper intake manifold, which has a couple benefits in its own. Um, the Bastard B-Series engines, you don't have very, I think the Acura Vigor throttle body you can go with, which only goes to, I think, what, I can't remember exactly what ours are. I think they jump up from 47 or 48 stock to like 52 or 53. Uh, going with the H22, I was able to go all the way to 70 millimeters, so it's three inch in. And I don't know how well you can see in there. You can't. But um, all the webbing is cut out of this. The adapter slash spacer down here actually has no webbing in it at all. And then the lower portion of this is cut out. And uh, maybe I'll have some pictures I can throw in here. But yeah, that's 
all done. That should be good for definitely some top end power at the very least. And then there's the Roscoe Racing fuel rail. Um, I believe I've talked about that before, but yeah, he did a very small run of these probably about 10 years ago as well. And this is one of probably less than 30 he ever made. And I have a fuel injector clinic, uh, 1200 CC injectors in there for the corn fuel, but it's come very far and it's uh, ready to go in the car now. I know someone commented about how it wasn't very clean. I feel like I've came pretty far from where it was. I mean, some of this stuff, like, I don't know, I'm not going to get a new power steering reservoir and stuff, but while well, this is cleaned up, I had to do some touch up on the firewall area for attaching a couple new components. But yeah, and then these uh, innovative mounts, I've heard uh, some, not the greatest things about them. So far they seem alright, obviously I, I am about to install the engine and see how they actually fit. But this rear mount, the back two lined up just fine. This one I had to cut out another quarter inch or so of that hole for this front bolt. But it's lined up in there pretty well now. I think everything will be okay, but like I said, we'll find out here shortly. So let's get this thing in. Alright, and it's in. Kind of. So, um, that last video was actually like two weeks ago at this point now. Um, I got it in. I've been kind of tinkering with little stuff along the way. And something I didn't know about these engine mounts is that um, they're all almost the same between the B21 and the B28-5. The trans mount and the rear mount have been fine. You can't even really see it anymore. I don't know why I'm trying. But on this side, um, the B21 and the B28-5 are actually totally different. The two-post mount right there is different on the B21. Um, the body's the same, but these brackets are different. So this is the B21. You got kind of roughly an idea of how wide that is. That's B28-5. And that's the mount that comes from Innovative. So if you have a B21 car, as much as it comes with the nice, it's essentially OBD1 wiring, so there's really not a whole lot you have to do in order to run an OBD1 ECU with like an S300 or Neptune or whatever you go with. But there are a couple little things that, uh, such as this, that I didn't even know about. And I actually had this from um, the car that I have, that I had, that I stole the current B28-5 in the car out of. So... Nice uh, new powder coated B21 bracket for sale. <laughs> and yeah, about to put this in. Get this in. And I can finally free up my jack from holding up the engine after two weeks. So here we go. <laughs> 